Hi everyone, it's Mr. Pope from Winton Grammar School for Boys and today for decision three or the third um, video I'm doing on decision mathematics we're looking at we're going to be looking at algorithms on graphs uh, and the main topic today is looking at something called minimum whoops can't spell minimum spanning trees okay and this is generally going to be looking at weighted graphs or weighted networks. So what do I mean by that? Okay, let's say I've got the nodes. Let's call this one A, B, C, D, E, like that. So this is A, this is B, this is C, this is D, this is E. And let's say they're connected in the various ways. A to D is something like that, B to D is something like that. And let's say they've all got weights of, say, maybe um, 2, 3, 5, 4, 3, 4, 2. Okay, a minimum spanning tree is a collection of arcs that connects all of the nodes together that doesn't form a cycle. So, no cycles. And each vertex is connected. So for example, I could say, well, this would be my spanning minimum spanning tree, uh, because if I was to just take those arcs, then every single point uh, doesn't necessarily have a direct connection, but you could travel from one node to the next and get from any node to any other node. And we would say the weight of the minimum spanning tree, which I call MST. Uh, in this case, would just be 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 3. Um, so what's that? 12. And the whole point of today is I'm going to be looking at different algorithms for calculating a minimum spanning tree. Because although I've found a spanning tree, an ST, is this necessarily the minimum? Is there a better way of doing it? Um, for example, uh, I could take this 4 out, and instead of making a connection there, I can clearly save 1 by making a connection to 3 there. So this clearly has a weight of 11, and so on. There's, there's various ways of checking whether it's a minimum spanning tree or not. Um, we're going to be looking at three main um, algorithms. Well, actually, we're going to be looking at four. Chris goals prims, prim with 1m, is it 1m or 2m, I always forget, prims, and then Dijkstra, uh, it looks like it should be pronounced Dijkstra, but it's pronounced Dijkstra, and the final one is Floyd's. Okay, now these are four algorithms you'd need to know to find a minimum spanning tree. But I'll be perfectly honest, um, there's no, there's, there's so many uh, algorithms to find minimum spanning trees. And I'm just going to go through one example of each because I feel uh, time is short. And also, um, it's probably better by example to see what's going on. Right, okay, so onwards, let's just do it. And I'll explain how each algorithm works. So, um, here we have a weighted graph where you can see all the connections going from A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. I'm um, hoping that's fairly clear. Um, now, this is fairly abstracted. We don't know what those weights mean, whether they're tolls, uh, how much it costs, whether this is bandwidth on a computer network, um, whether this is a length of a road or a time taken to do a task. We don't know. The point is it's abstracted and you can use it for whatever you wish to. So, part A, state two differences between Kruskal's algorithm and Prim's algorithm. Well, okay, so Kruskal's algorithm is where you take the arcs in ascending order and you keep adding them uh, 
and there's a caveat there. You keep adding them unless it forms a cycle uh, until all nodes are connected. Okay, so Chris Gold's album algorithm is not particularly difficult. You just list every single uh, arc. And by the way, the arcs are the connections, like so. The nodes are the actual points. So you list out every single arc in ascending order, i.e. smallest to biggest. And then you keep adding arcs until you make a cycle. So say, for example, we added B, then E. We couldn't add E to D because then that would form a cycle here. That's like a loop. Uh, not to be confused with a loop, which is where you've got a node connected to itself. That's a loop. This would be an example of a cycle. Uh, this would also be a cycle. It would be a four-node cycle, and so on. So we can't have any loops or cycles. Um, what is Prim's algorithm? Well, instead of taking arcs, we consider nodes, and we keep adding the nearest available node until we span the graph and again no cycles allowed okay so um so what does that mean well prim's graph it means we start at a particular node say a and then we think, okay, what's the next node that we could add that's the nearest one? So if I look at A, it's only connected to B, E, C, and D. And which one's the nearest? Well, it looks like C with 25. So with Prim's algorithm, the next node would be C. And then what you do is you'd say, okay, all the ones that are connected to C and A, which is the next nearest one, and so on and so on. So C is connected to B and D and F now. So which is the shortest connection? It looks like F with 18, so that'd be the third node. And we build up like so uh, until it's all done. Anyway, let's just do what the question says. So listing the arcs in order that you consider them, find the minimum spanning tree for the network in the diagram above using PRIMS. Okay, so using PRIMS, PRIMS algorithm, uh, what is the lowest arc on the grid? Well, I believe it's D to E, which is 19. I don't think there's a shorter arc. So we'll have D to E, which is 19. That's accepted. And then what's the next one? They don't necessarily have to be joining, right? They might not be. So I think the next one above 19 is 20, which is here, which is D to F. That's fine. So that's 20. That will be accepted. The next one after that, after 20, is, well, there's two, isn't there? There's 21 here and 21 there. Do you notice how this 21 would form a cycle? So we can't include that. But we still have to make sure that we've considered it. So what we would do is we'd write E to F, which is 21, but we reject it. So, I don't know, put a cross or in brackets or something. And the next one along would be C to D. Um, which is also 21, and we accept that one. Okay. Um, is there anything above? Well, let's cross them out as we go. So that's 19 done, that's the 21 done, that's the 21 done, that's the 20 done. Uh, is there 22? Yes, there is. So we can go from D to G like that. So DG is 22, so that's accepted. So I'll put a little cross there. Um, what else can we do? Uh, after 22, looks like 23. We can't have that one because that would form a cycle. Can you see it loops around D, F, and G? So we would say uh, F to G, which is 23, is rejected because it forms a cycle. So goodbye. Uh, next up. Oh, my God. I'm such a silly. I've forgotten this 18 down here. I've completely balls it up. Okay. Well, that's not too bad because now I can just shift this list down and I can write uh, C to F is 18. Okay, so let's go back and see how that changes things. Oh, so silly, silly person. Okay, so 18 is definitely the smallest, yes? I should have listed them in order first, but I'm rushing. 
So C to F is 18, that's done, that will get accepted. D to E is 19, that will be accepted, that doesn't change. D to F is 20, that would also be accepted still. E to F would be rejected still. C to D, ah, now C to D would form a cycle around C, D and F. So actually that would be rejected. So that would be rejected. Um, D to G, that would still be accepted because that doesn't form a cycle. So that's fine. And F to G would be rejected because that forms a cycle as well. Um, and now we're back to where we were. Uh, e to G, which is 24, would be rejected because that forms a cycle. Uh, I've done E to F, haven't I? So I crossed that out. Uh, what's next? Uh, A to C, which is 25. So that will be accepted because that doesn't form a cycle. So 25 accepted. Um, what's next? There's a 20. There's, this isn't in order. This is just the weight. I'm just, just so happens they're going up in one. Uh, A to D, which is 26, would be rejected because that would form a cycle, so that's no good. Uh, then it looks like A to B, which is 27. So A to B is 27, so that's okay. Uh, we can't have B to C because that would form a cycle B, A, C, so that's out. So B to C, which is 28, gets rejected. We can't have B to D because that forms a cycle with B, A, C, F and D, a big cycle there. So that has to be rejected. So B to D forms um, 28 as well, so that's no good. And then it looks like uh, A to E would be rejected as well because that forms a cycle. Uh, so A to E would be 29, that has to be rejected. And then I think the only one left is B to E, but that would form a cycle, which is 30, and that'd be rejected. And to be honest, as soon as we've added B, we've actually connected A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So we've done all our connections now, so all we have to do is add up all the weights of the ones we've ticked. So the total weight using prims would be uh, 18 plus 19 plus 20 plus 22 plus 25 plus 27 I make that 131 okay so let me just double check 18 19 20 yep 22 yep and then 25 27 yep okay cool so that's how prims algorithm would work for something like this and there's another way of applying Prim's algorithm. Spoiler alert is to do with distance matrices, but we'll cover that in a second. Kruskal's algorithm. Okay. So let's say we're going to wipe all this out and we're going to try again using Kruskal's. So uh, this time I'm going to use orange. So let's say arbitrarily I start at, uh, I don't know, A for apple. So let's say I start at A. What's the next nearest node to A? Well, I've got a 25, 26, 29, and 27. So the next nearest one would be C. So that'd be 25 plus. Right. We're now at C. What's the next nearest connector? Well, I've got 28, 18, 21, 26 still, 29, and 27. I believe this 18 is going to be the next one. So that'd be F. So that'd be 18. So let's double check. And then from F's point of view, or from all of them point of view, uh, let's let's look at we've crossed off 25, crossed off 18. So of all the all the connections, we've got all the ones from A, which is 27, 26, 29, the ones from C, which is 28 and 21, and the ones from F, which is 20 and 23. Right, so what's the lowest of all those numbers? Well, it looks like it's 20, so D would be the next one. So we'll cross out 20. Um, and then from D's point of view, we've got the connector, this 28. 
we've got 22 and we've got this 19. Ah, from S point of view, there's also 19 as well. There's that 21 going up to E. So, uh, what's the next one? Well, it looks like D to E, uh, which would be another 19. So that one can go, and we're now at E. Uh, so we've now got 30, and there's 24. Ah, so we've got all the arcs to consider now. Um, so really, at this point, the next one to add we can't have the 21 because that would form a cycle so that would go away can't have that 21 because that would form a cycle with d e f it looks like d to g is the next one so that's 22 so that's gone um so at the moment we've got a to c c to f uh we had f to d didn't we which is there we had E next, which was that 19, and we had D to G like that. So actually, that's limited quite a lot of our things. So we can't have the 29, that would be a cycle. Uh, we can't have that 26, it would be a cycle. We can't have this 24, because it's a cycle, or this 23. So it looks like we've got the choice of 27, 28, or 30. So it must be the 27 that we had. So if I whack all these together, I've got 25 plus 18 plus 20 plus 19 plus 22 plus 27, which also equals 131. So this is also, you know, this is also a minimum spanning tree. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily the same as the other one. It might be. Um, but yeah, you'll get that. You'll get alternate minimum spanning trees. Uh, just because they're a minimum doesn't mean they're necessarily unique. Um, and and yeah, that's how you apply uh, Chris Gulls. And the one before that was Prims. Uh, so Prims... Oh no, hold on. Oh God, I've done this completely wrong. Um, okay, Prims is where you're adding nodes. So what I've done in orange is prims. And cruskulls, where you're considering the arcs, is what I've done over here. OK, so to not make that any more confusing than it actually is, uh, let's, let's just change the definition for cruskulls to be the thing in orange. Let's turn the thing this into blue. Nope, I had it right the first time. Yeah. Okay, so Chris Goals was done in blue. Uh, Prims was done in orange. Uh, I've done them in a bit of a wonky order, but that's the right way around. So Prims is where you start with nodes and you add the next nearest node and cross goals is where you list all the arcs in ascending order yeah sorry I answered the questions in the wrong order um, so really this this should be my answer to II and this one up here should be my answer to I okay so if you just want to read then I mean the notes will explain themselves but yeah sorry about that um, now prims can also be done uh, on a distance matrix. So instead of actually uh, listing out or rather drawing a graph like this, you could actually do it by a matrix. And the way this works is this is saying to get from A to C. So you can see this is the from and this is the to. So if you want to get from A to C, you just look at where they meet up, and apparently that is a distance of 180. So coming from the left is from, vertically is the two. So why are these things blank? Because if I want to get from D to D, that's just done. You're already there, so you don't travel anything. Um, now, usually these are symmetric, but they might not necessarily be. For example, in a directed... Um, in a directed graph so say I've got a there 
I've got B there and I've got C here and I've got this, this and this where this is 2, this is 3 and this is 4 but there's a direction from A to B like that then in this case what would that distance matrix look like? Well A, B, C, A, B, C well A to A, B to B and C to C aren't going to matter from A to B you can't do so we'd put infinity or you just put another horizontal line like that uh, Floyd's you'd put infinity and you'll see why in a second uh, from A to C that would be 2 from B to A well that's 4 we know it because that's the direction of that arc B to C is 3 and then C to A is 2 and C to B is 3 so notice how they're not necessarily symmetric on that diagonal it depends on the direction uh, and just having a quick peek at this it looks like this is symmetric so this doesn't appear to be a directed network or a directed graph so we'll leave it at that okay so Using Prim's algorithm starting from A to find a minimum spanning tree for this table, you must list the arcs for to form your tree in the order they were selected. Okay, so if we're starting from A, what we do is I don't need this to or from stuff anymore. Well I could do, I'll put it, I'll put it in a different colour. So this is the from side and the to stuff is up here. Okay, so what we do is we started from A so we'll label this 1 and then what we do is we cross out the A row and then we look for the lowest number lowest number in that column and then we circle it and then repeat that process uh, and then so what, what do we do so we, we crossed out crossed out corresponding row. So if we're starting at A, then we put a 1 above the A to tell us that we were starting there first, that's the first position. We circle the A or put a 1, doesn't particularly matter, and then we cross out the A row. Now we consider all these numbers in the A column and which one's the smallest. Well the smallest in there appears to be 70. Now because that's in the D row, that means we're going to label D as number 2 and circle D. And now we cross everything out other than that D, so like that. So because we circled that 70, we're not going to cross it out, so we just strike a line through everything else. And now this time, so, so what did I do? I considered, I started at A, and the next node I considered was A to D. So I then considered A to D, which was worth 70. D was the second one. And now I have to find the smallest number of all the remaining ones in the A and D column. Well, the smallest out of those numbers seems to be 95. So I circle the 95. It's in the E column. and Sorry, it's in the A column, but the E row. So that must mean I added the A to E thing, which was worth 95. E was the third letter I added. So I'm going to add E, label it 3, and then I'm going to cross everything else out in the E row. And now I have to find the smallest number in the remaining things in the A column, the D column, and the E column. Uh, after a quick scan, I believe 125 is the next smallest. I believe out of all those red things, 125 is the smallest. Now it's in the D column B row, so that's going to be D to B. That's worth 125, so that would be B. So then, because it's in the B row, I then put B as my 4, and I cross everything out that's in the B. And I essentially, I just keep going until I've done everything. Uh, and now I have to consider everything in the A columns, the B columns, the D columns, and the E columns. Uh, so the next smallest, I've got 150, is there anything lower? No, 150 is the next one. So 150, which was here, is D column C row, so that's going from C to D, or DC. And that's 150, and then C is the next letter. So C would be the fifth one. We cross out everything in row C. And now we have to consider everything in the A column, the B column, the C column, the D column, the E column that hasn't been um, considered yet. Well, I believe the smallest out of those is 155. 
which is down here. Uh, and that's F, so F will be the sixth one, shock horror. And F was in the C column, so it's C to F, which is 155. So the order, so the nodes we considered was A, D, E, B, C in that order, and then it was A to D, A to E, D to B, D to C, C to F. Um, and if you want the weight of this, you can just add all these things together. And so the total weight is 70 plus 95 plus 125 plus 150 plus 155. So that total weight is 595. Okay, so use Prim's algorithm starting from A to find a minimum spanning tree for this table. You must list the arcs that form your tree in the order they are selected. Well, I've done that. The arcs that I've selected are here. Okay, that's, that's, that's green maybe. Okay, these were the arcs in which I selected. So arcs in order, colon. Okay, draw your tree using the vertices given in the diagram below. Well, what did we do? Let's try a different color. We said A to D was the first one, so we went from A to D like so, which was 70, was it? A to D, okay, so that was worth 70. And then we said A to E, so from there to there, uh, that's 95 and then D to B so that's from there to there that was 125 and then D to C so from there to there that was D to C was 150 and then finally C to F so lol straight line just going through it like that that was 155 okay so yeah, that's the minimum spanning tree. So draw your tree using the vertices given in the diagram. State the what total weight of tree. Well, I've done that already. That's 595. Okay, and there isn't a better way of minimizing this. Okay, so just to recap, uh, prims is where you add nodes and you're connecting the nearest node from the, the weighted network as you're going along. Chris Gulls, you don't care if it's connected or not, you just list all of the arcs in ascending order and you add the next arc on and you don't want cycles. Prims you can do uh, also with a distance matrix, as I've said before. Hopefully that made a bit of sense. Um, and yeah, a lot of these questions, if it asks you to do something, there's, there's no real shortcut to it. You just have to be aware um, what the terminology is, what it means by a vertex, what it means by drawing a tree, uh, what the weight of the tree is. It's just it's just knowing all this lingo, and the more questions you do and just being familiar with it, the better. Okay, now this is a classic example of Dijkstra's, and I knew it wasn't D I J D J I. It was D I J. This is it. This is the spelling of Dijkstra's. It looks like it should be spelled Dijkstra's, but it's pronounced Dijkstra's. Dyke. Stra, Dijkstra. Anyway, okay, so we're going to be using Dijkstra's algorithm. Um, right, now, uh, first of all, here is my weighted network, and they tell us the total weight of the network is 370. Uh, the reason they might do this is, well, this might be part A of a question and part B was to do with root inspection, which we'll tackle next week, where you need to know the total weight of the network. Um, so I, to be honest, this isn't necessary. This isn't necessary for this question. Um, so figure one represents a network of corridors in a building and the number on each arc represents the length in meters of each of the corresponding corridors. So. Using Dijkstra's algorithm to find the shortest path from A to D, stating the path and its length. Okay, so this is the start point A, and we want to get to D. Okay, now, how to do Dijkstra's? Can you see all these nodes A to J? For each of these nodes, and you'll be given this in the exam, you're going to have to create a box. Right, and this box is quite special. It's got three components in the top half and a big bit at the bottom and you're going to need to do this with every single now if I do that is that going to 
Yeah, it's going to copy the green thing. God damn. Um, now with this box, you need to have it for each one of the letters. So there's one for B, there's one for C, there's one for F, there's one for G, there's one for D, there's one for J, and here's one for H. Now the, usually, oh there needs to be one for E as well, like that. Right, have I got all the nodes? I believe so. Right, now in the test, in a test or in a textbook of some kind, that, or an exercise book, they give these to you, and the structure of what goes into these boxes is the following. Um, now, to be honest, I don't particularly care how strict you are with this. I don't think the exams care either because they'll be filled out for you. But the first box in the top left of each of these boxes are just the node labels. So that'd be A, B, C, F, G, E, D, J, and H. Uh, I feel there should be an I. It just goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, J. That's weird. Okay, never mind. Right. Second of all, um, the second box is the position considered, and I'll talk about that in a second. This box is the final value that it takes to get to that point, and the bottom bigger box is kind of like a working value. So I'll do three or four iterations, and you can probably tell what I'm going to be doing. So since we're starting at A, this is the first position considered. So we'll put a 1 there, and its final working value is 0, because we've not travelled anywhere from A to get to A. Now what I need to do is consider all the connections from A to every other point that does not have a final value. So B, C and F do not have any final values in here. So they're the ones I need to consider. So from A to B, that's 38. So I'll put that 38 in this working box here. From A to C is 75. So I'll put 75 in this working value here. And from A to F, that's 42. So I'll put 42 here. I then check to see, have I done all of the connections? And I say yes. And then what I'll do is I'll take the lowest one of all the working values that I've filled in so far. So which is the smallest, 38, 42, or 75? And it's clearly 38. So because that's the most smallest, that will be the second one I consider. So that's 2. And it will now get a final value of what's ever's in the working value, which is 38. Okay. Next up, I now have to consider all the connections from A and B. So B is going to introduce two new connections, which is going to go here to 42. So the working value of D now is going to be 38 from B plus the 42, which is 80. And then from B to E, I've got to add 15 to the working value of B. So 38 plus 15 is 53, is it not? And what these working values say is to get from the starting point, which is A, to E down the road, then doing it this way, it's going to take 53 to E, or it could take 80 to D. When all of these boxes have final values in them, then we can trace back, and I'll show you how that works as well, but the algorithm will be complete and we'll found a minimum connection. Okay, so I've now considered all the new um, connections. So now I have to look at what's the lowest working value of all the boxes. So 75, 42, 53 and 80. And I believe 42 is the next one. So 42, this will be the third box I consider. It has a final uh, value of 42. And now this is going to introduce new connections. So F to H first. So 39 plus the working weight of the previous bit, 42, is 81, isn't it? So I'll put 81 here. 
Um, then I have f to g, so 42 plus 12 is 54, so that's a new one, so I'll go there. And then finally, I've got 42 plus 20, which is 62. And now look, that 62 is smaller than 75, so I cross the 75 out and put 62 there. I'm looking for the lowest number possible in these boxes. And you can kind of think of it as this big working value bit as kind of like um, notes, and you're constantly improving on them and you're crossing them out and so on. Okay, now I have considered all the connections from that F, so now I look at all the working values, so 62, 54, 53, 81 and 80, which is the smallest, well it looks like 53 at E. So E will be now the fourth one, it has a final value of 53, and now I have to consider all the new connections from that going to other bits. So 53 plus 10 is 63, so I put 63 and cross it out because 54 is better. And then 53 plus 17 I believe is 70, so 70 will go here. Uh, and that's it, is it not? So okay, out of all the working values uh, I've got 54, I've got 81, I've got 70, I've got 80, and I've got 62. I think that 54 at G is going to be the next one. So 54 at G, that is going to be the 1, 2, 3, 4, fifth one with a weight of 54. And now I consider all the new working values. So G connecting back to C. Well, 54 plus 7 is 61, so there's a slight improvement doing it that way. Uh, I don't consider G to F because F is finalised. Uh, G to, to, to H, which is adding 23, so 54 add 23 is 77, which is better than 81, so I'll cross that out. And then the only connection left to consider for G... Um, well, I can go G to, well, G to E is finalised, so I won't consider that. And G to J is 54 plus 14, which is 68, which is an improvement from 70, so I'll put that down to 68. And now that is considered. Okay, so where are we now? Um, do, 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 do. Right, so we have now got 61 to consider. We've got 80 to consider, 68 and 77. Everything else is done. 61 is clearly the next one. Now, here's the thing. C is now connected to all other nodes that are finalised. To A is finalised, to F is finalised, and to G is finalised. So this is actually quite an easy one. It's done, so it's just 61, and then... Um, what is it? What are we on now? One, two, three, four, five. This will be the sixth one. And now, out of the ones that we haven't considered, uh, that are finalised, I believe it's only H, J and D. So we've got the lowest of 77, 68 and 80. So clearly 68 is lower. So this will now be the seventh one with a working value of 68. And we consider 68 plus 10, which is 78, so there's a slight saving there. Or we consider 68 plus 6, which is 74, which is a slight saving here. And now that's done. To finish off the algorithm, we can probably see what's going to happen. We've got 74 and 78 to consider. 74 is lower, so this will be the next one, value of 8 and working value of 74. Since H is connected to all the finalised ones, we're done, so we move on. And now D is the lowest, so it will be the ninth one we consider with 78. Okay, so we've now gone from A to D. Now here comes the tricky bit. We now have to work backwards. So what you do, okay, is you consider the working value, and then if you subtract the arc, does it give the final value there? So does 78 minus 10 equals 68? Yes, so that means we must have gone from D to J. Now if I did 78 minus 42, does that equal 38? Well no it doesn't, so that means we didn't go back to B. Now 68 
minus 6 is 62, which is not 74, so it can't have been that way. 68 minus 17 is 51, not 53, so it couldn't have been up there. Is 68 minus 14 54? Yes, it is, so we must have gone back to G. And then I think we can more or less trace this back by I. 54 minus 12 does give us 42. And then 42 at F minus this 42 equals to A. So it looks like the shortest path is from A, then to F, then to G, then to J, then to D. And the weight of it is just 78. Okay, so use Dijkstra's algorithm to find the shortest path from A to B, stating the path and its length. Well, the path is A to F to G to J to D, and the length of that path is 78. Okay, that's pretty much Dijkstra's. Um, a question might be a bit difficult in terms of it might say something like, oh, uh, on a windy day, uh, the path from F to G was broken, uh, how would you alter your route? And, well, okay, you might want to try something else. You can usually do it by eye. It probably means you want to find the shortest one of either going to C first or going to H first. Um, it just depends on the question. Um, there is no rhyme or reason of how to do that more efficiently. You just need to just have a look and think for yourself of what the optimal solution would be. They're almost like short little fix-arounds in anything. Okay, so just to recap, we've done Chris Goals, we've done Prims, we've done Dijkstra's, we're now going to finish on Floyd, so hopefully this will just be an hour video and we're done. Okay, so Floyd's, a little bit tricky, but essentially we're going to be using two tables side by side. And I'll just read the question and then I'll construct it for you. So the network in figure two shows the direct roads linking five villages A, B, C, D, E. The numbers of each arc represent the length in miles of the corresponding road and the roads from A to E, from C to B, are one way, as indicated by arrows. Okay, so look, clearly you can only go from C to B, but B to C is blocked and A to E is one way going that way. Right, so that's so we've got a nice little example of uh, a directed network. Okay, complete the initial di distance and the route tables for the network provided in the answer book. Okay, so we're going to have to do this. So the route tables, let's do them first. The route tables are really easy. They're always just they're always just the column heading spammed down the column. So the A column would just be A, 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 A. This one would just be B, 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 B. And then it will be C, 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 C. Then it will be D, 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 D. Then it will be E, 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 E. So what this is saying is if I want to go from anywhere in the rows to anywhere in the columns, then this is saying to get from A to B, well, you dummy, you just go to B. Yeah, you just do it. And if I want to go from A to C, then A to C is just going to C first. Now, what this will tell us is this will tell us, as it goes on, the detours. Okay, so, for example, um, as this algorithm progresses, suppose this cell gets changed to a D then the way you'd read this is to get from A to B, I have to go from A to D first and then B. So that would mean to go from A to B, I have to go A to D, then B first. And what this algorithm is going to do is it's going to shuffle these letters around based on what we're going to do in a second, so that when I want to go from one letter to another, it will systematically tell me which wayward points I need to go to, which detours. So. At the moment, the initial setup is there are no detours. If you want to get somewhere, you just go from A to that place or B to that. You just go from the place you are to the place you want. So at the moment, there's no detours. That's what this is saying. And we're going to have to construct the detours. Now, the, the initial distance table is similar. The rows are the froms and the columns are the twos. 
So you just fill it out as you can see above. So I don't know how good this is going to be. I don't know if you can see clearly. So to go from A to B, B to A, that's 15. Well, let's do the easy bit. You can't go from A to A or B to B or C to C or D to D or E to E because they're the same thing. A to B is 15 and so is B to A because they're, they're a two-way street. What else is a two-way street? Well, A to C is 7, right? So A to C is 7 and C to A is 7 as well. And now A to D is 18. And that's a two-way street. So A to D is 18 and D to A is also 18. And then where's E? E is over here. Now notice A to E is 3, but E to A you can't do. Right, so what does that mean? It means A to E was 3, but E to A you can't do. So we're going to put an infinity here. Okay, we can't do it. It's like an infinite length. You can't complete it. Right, let's try all the stuff from B. So let's look at B to C. B to C we can't do, but C to B is just 5. So... B to C is infinity, but C to B is a 5. Okay, so that's that one done. Right, now B only connects to A and C, so B doesn't have any direct connections to D and E. So that means we're going to have infinity there, infinity there, infinity there, infinity there. Right, we're only looking at the initial distance, i.e. the direct distance, i.e. just the connection from there to there. Okay, now let's look at C. Can you get from C to D? Yes, you can. It's a two-way street and it's four. So C to D is four. So C to D is four and D to C is also four. Can you get from C to E? Yes, it's nine and it's a two-way street, so that's fine. So C to E is nine, E to C is also nine. And the final one is D to E. Well, D to E is a two-way street, which is 3, so we're going to leave it as that. So that's D to E is 3, and E to D is 3. Okay, there is my initial distance table. Now, what we're going to do, and this, this, this is going to sound a bit complicated, but it's actually really easy, is we're going to start from the first letter, i.e. the top most value of each row and column, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take this column and this row, and then treat it as like a coordinate system. So, what do I mean by that? I mean, if I take, uh, let's say, well, I, I ignore, I ignore all the diagonals. So these are always going to be dashes, right? That's dumb. But suppose I I look at all the combinations of rows and columns. So let's say I take column C and uh, not row C and column B. What does that correspond to? Well, that corresponds to this cell here, the infinity cell, because in that column and that row is the infinity cell. What I do is I say to myself, right, 7 plus the 15 is 22. Is that lower? If yes, then you replace it. Okay, so 15 plus 7 is 22. Is that smaller than infinity? Yes, so that's 22. Okay, now here's the important bit. See, I'm going to put a bracket around this 22 to say that I've made a change. Now, because that change was made when we did the A rows and A columns, then this corresponding cell corresponds to over here in the root table. Do you see that? It's the second row, third column. So now, because I'd made that change while looking at it from the A perspective, then I'm going to change this to an A, put a bracket around it. Can you see previously it was the C in the original root table? So by doing this, I've changed the C into an A. What that means is, is if I start at B, to get to C, I go B to A and then C. So I have to go via a detour by A to get to C first. So let's have a look over here. If I start at B, to get to C, I go B, detour A, then C. And that makes sense. I can't go directly from B to C. 
So already your algorithm is starting to pick up what you can and can't do. So to be honest, this algorithm will be performing a lot. It's going to be done three times and I'm going to do this for about 20 cells each. So you're going to get the hang of it, but I'll do it again nice and slow. Okay, let's just do them in turn. Right, what's next? Well, let's say we're now at the 18 and 15. We'll add them two together, so 15 and 18 is 33. Is that smaller than the corresponding intersection, which is at infinity? Yes, 33. So that's replaced, 33. And because we're dealing with all the A's, I'm going to replace this cell by an A. Next up, um, I'm now at the 3. 3 plus 15 is 18. Is that smaller than the corresponding infinity? Yes. So I'm going to put an 18 there. And because I'm dealing with A and A, then this gets replaced with A as well. Right, so now I've done the B column. Let's move down to the C column. So 15 plus 7 is 22. Is that smaller than 5? No, so I leave the 5 alone. Okay, so that means it was a B in the original root table, so it stays as a B. I'm not going to put a bracket around it. Okay, let's move on. 7 over here. Well, no, that, that's gonna no, no, no. Well, technically, this is just this just stays as A, B, C, D, E. That's not going to change, so we're not going to consider that one because it's the diagonal. Let's try this. Seven plus eighteen uh, is twenty-five. Is that smaller than four? No. So the four stays. So that means this was a D, so it stays a D. And then seven and three is ten. Is that smaller than the corresponding thing in there? 9? No, it's not. So that just stays as a 9. So this will stay as an E. Uh, by the way, if we're not changing the top row, this is just going to stay as 15, 7, 18, and 3. And this is going to stay as 15, 7, 18, infinity. This is going to stay as A, 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 A. And this is going to stay as... Oh, did I, why, did I, why did I write B? That's supposed to be a... God damn it. That's a B. That's a B. So that's a B. That's a B. That's a... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on a minute. We don't know what these ones are yet. Uh, da, 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 the top row. So that'd be C, D, E. Okay, right. So let's move on to the next row. So the D row, B column. So 18... Whoops. Um... 18 plus 15 is 33. Is that smaller than infinity? Yes. So 33 is going to be replaced. So I'm going to put an A in this block here. Um, let's squish over. 18 and 7 is 25. That's not smaller than 4. So that stays as a 4. So this one stays the same as a C. Uh, we don't do the next one because that's the D by D. So we look at 3. 18 3 is 21, that's not smaller than the corresponding 3, so that stays as a 3. Um, so then that stays as an E in the root table. And finally, we're in the bottom row. Um, lol, it's an infinity, so there's no way that infinity plus stuff is going to be lower than anything else. So that just stays as it is, so everything else here is going to stay the same. So infinity, 9 and 3, so this is going to be B, C, D like so. Now notice by doing this we have actually changed one, two, three, four cells in each of the blocks. That's really important. Okay, probably thinking so what? Well, in actual fact that is one iteration of the, um, the algorithm. What we'd have to do now is then do the same thing but this time for the B column and the B row. Okay, and I'll use um, red this time, so B and B, and we do exactly the same thing, replacing stuff in the root table, and then once we've done that, then we do it for the C column and C row, and then we do it for the D column and D row, and then we do it for the E column and E row, so we're going to need to do as many iterations as there are, uh, columns and rows, to complete the algorithm. 
Luckily, the question only asks us to do three iterations. So we've done iteration one iteration. We would have to do five to complete the algorithm. But I think for part uh, C, it tells us after five iterations, i.e. when the thing's done. So really, we only have to do the first three. It's pretty tedious, but we'll just do it. So for the second uh, iteration, well, the columns and the rows of the B columns, sorry, the column and row in B is going to stay the same. So this is going to be 15 dash 533 infinity this is going to be 15 22 33 18 uh, the corresponding columns and rows of the root table are not going to change either so this is a b and then it was the new a a a and then this column was b b b and then this was changed to an a b the diagonals are not going to change either because they're that so this is going to be a nice a b c d e like so okay right you can probably spot what you need to do here so let's do it so 15 and 22 lol it's not smaller than 7 so the 7 stays so this stays the same uh, 15 and 33 is not smaller than 18 and 15 and 18 is not going to be smaller than that so that top row all stays the same so it's going to be 18 and 3 so this is going to be D and E uh, if I look at this row, uh, 5 and the 15 is going to be 20, which is not bigger than the 7. So this stays the 7, and that's an A. 5 and 22, well, let's just stay. 5 and 33, nope. And 5 and 18, nope. So these stay as 4 and 9, so this stays as D and E. Uh, next row down. For 33, well, since 33 is larger than everything else in this row, even when I add it to all these bits, they're, they're not going to be smaller. So that row is going to stay the same as well. And then if you look at the bottom one, that's infinity. And you can have the same thing again. If infinity plus stuff, it's not going to be smaller. So actually, in this iteration, nothing seemed to have happened. That's fine. We've just we've just checked. It's totally fine. So with that iteration, absolutely nothing was changed. And that may well be the case. Maybe looking at B wasn't particularly effective. Okay. Now for the third iteration, we're going to look at the C column and the C row. Uh, let's try the orange. So what's going to happen? Well, the diagonals are going to stay the same, so dash, 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 dash. The rows and columns of C are going to stay the same, so 7, 22, 4, 9, 7, 5, 4, 9 stay the same. And the corresponding roots over here is still going to be the diagonals the same, A, B, C, D, E. The column is going to be C, A, C, 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 and across the middle, A, B, C, D, E. Okay, let's deal with this. So. Um, let's do the first column of C. Well, 7 plus 5 is 12 into the 15, so 12, that's going to get replaced. Now, because we're working in the C column, that means we're going to replace this thing by a C. Okay, every letter we're going to replace it with a C now if it needs replacing. Uh, 7 plus this 4 is 11, and that's smaller than the corresponding 18. So we're going to change this to an 11, which means we put a C in here. And 7 plus 9 is 16, which is not smaller than the 3, so that stays as 3, so that will stay as an E. Next column. 22 plus 7 is 29, so that stays as a 15, so that stays as an A. 22 plus 4 is 26, which is smaller than the 33. So that becomes a 26, that means that gets replaced with a C. And 22 plus 9, lol, is 31, which is not smaller than 18, so that stays, so that's an A still. Now if we scooch on down to the 4, 4 plus 7 is 11, so that 11 will replace the corresponding 18 in this cell. So uh, this is a C now. Uh, 4 plus 5 is 9, lol, that's a lot smaller than 33, so then that becomes a C as well. 4 plus the 9 is 13, which is not smaller than the 3, so that stays, so this stays. And then the final uh, row, 
9 plus 7 is 16. That's going to replace infinity because it's much smaller. So that will become a C. Uh, 9 plus 5 is 14, which is clearly a lot smaller than infinity. So that becomes a C. Uh, 9 plus 4 is 13, which is not smaller than 3. So that stays a 3 and that stays as a D. Right. Okay. So that's three iterations done. Okay. So that, that's how you do it. And then the, the next thing we do is for the fourth iteration we do the D and the D and then once that's all sorted then we do the E and the E and then once that's all sorted the table is now done and it's now ready to be read. Okay, so complete the initial distance table, distance and root tables for the network providing the answer booklet. Yes, that was done. That was this stuff. Part B, perform the first three iterations of Floyd's algorithm. You should now you should show the distance table and the root table after each of three iterations. Yes, that's also done. Okay, part C. After five iterations of Floyd's algorithm, the final distance table and partially completed root final root table are shown below. C I. Explain how the partially completed root table can be used to find the shortest route from E to A. Okay. Right. So what does this mean? What would we do? Well, we start in the E row and we go to the cell in the A column because we want to go from E to A. So from E to A means we have to go to D. So that means E to A, we have to have a detour via D. And now we're at D, we then consider the D row and our objective is still to get to A, isn't it? So we go A to the D to the A column, we're at nat C. So that means D to A, we now have to take a detour via C. And then we do the same thing, we go to the C row, and then we want to go to A, so we go to the A column, and now we're at A. And now because it's, this table is saying to go from C to A, we just go C to A. Whereas this table was saying to go from E to A, we have to go to D first, because it's in the A column. And then to go from D to A, oops, to go from D to A, from D to A in the A column, we have to go to C, and then C to A in the A column, we have to go to A. So here's my explanation. And state this route, well, that's easy. We go from E to D. Then we have to take, sorry, we have to go from E, take a detour to D, then from D, take a detour to C, and then from C, take a detour to A. So what would that look like on the graph? So we're wanting to go from E to A. Well, E to A is here. So this is saying I have to go from E to D, which is there, which is 3, plus D to C, which is there, which is another 4, and then C to A, which is 7. So 3 plus 4 plus 7 is a total distance of 14. Now you can probably see this is actually a much quicker way. Uh, for example, why is this pretty optimal? Well, because to get from E to C, I would rather go 3 than 4 rather than a 9, because I'm saving 2 going that way. Uh, I can't go straight to A. Uh, if I got to D, I would rather do 4 than 7 rather than do an 18 because 11 is quicker than 18 and similarly it makes no sense to go 4, 5 like that which is clearly going to be an extra 24 which is going to be a total of 27 so you can probably tell from inspection that this is the optimal route but it's just nice to see the Floyd algorithm at work uh, just making this decision really okay that's it hope you enjoyed it I've left a bunch of stuff for you to do peace out